my name is Marjolaine. I actually am not having a very regular background because I'm coming from the private sector and I was working with big companies such as L'Oréal and Amazon before joining the, the private sector. I decided to switch um, just for a matter of values um, to have like a more meaningful job. Um, also, I think if I'm very like honest, just kind of pleasure for adventures and going a bit around the world. Uh, my name is Stefano. Uh, now I'm working for Intersos. I started this, uh, actually, my background, I have a degree, an art, a master degree in art history, so totally different from the from this uh, work, but I started this adventure in Australia. I, I was working for a, a migration museum. I was working with the Aboriginal community, and then I just switched from the art to the, let's say, to the humanitarian, and then I start uh, to work in Namibia for another NGO for seven years, and then I moved to Iraq, to Yemen, and now I'm coming direct to South Sudan for the uh, Intersource. I had no idea, Stefano. <laughs> um, I think it really depends. Uh, so for me, for example, I had two positions in South Sudan. My first one was field coordinator, so I was really based on the field, and it was, I didn't have a lot of typical day. <laughs> it was really like a day after day, make sure that operations are going well, so like problem solving all the time, um, make sure that we were providing access to water, that everything goes well, uh, talk with other partners, look for funds, write a proposal, like so like very, very different. Now I'm firm coordinator, so my typical day is much more to talk with the basis, to show everything is good, to discuss with my counterparts, with the organization or donors, uh, to try to keep some time to think about strategy and what we, we should do. Um, yeah, so half of the day, making sure that ensuring the quality of what we are doing, uh, and talking with donors to do advocacy and to do fundraising. Actually, my day is in South Sudan, I'm the head of mission or country director, depends on the organization. And mostly my work is to coordinate the mission. So ensure that all the people do their job. And okay, so I coordinate the logistics, I coordinate the security mostly. Security is under the mission, so I'm checking daily in all the, our 14 bases where we are. If the security is fine, if there's some problem, I'm organized with the team. And then uh, I deal with my program coordinator, you know, when they make a proposal. And then I do meeting with a donor, with the embassy, with like uh, other stakeholders in order to, 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 to present intersource, uh, to introduce intersource and also to, to be like, I'm actually I'm the focal point in the country. And then I have also the part a bit more boring with the HQ in Rome, I have to report, I have to do HR, I have to report like uh, on a weekly basis, uh, how is the mission? And uh, especially, and then often, the, the part that I love more, I'm going to, to the field to visit all the bases. I stay five days in one place, five days the other one, just to be close to the, to, to the team. I don't want to have an idea that the mission is someone close in the room and doesn't talk with anybody. Actually, I have a very, I can, I'm, I'm in connection with the, from the cleaner to the coordinator because I want to know my team and they want to be also available for them if something happens or they, they have a problem. Uh, I think I would go with uh, dramatic. Really, it's something that um, famine is not something that is natural. You know, like we know that in the world there is enough food for for everyone, and if we end up in this situation in South Sudan, it's actually like a, a man-made crisis. So for me, I would say like it's shameful as humanity. Well, it should be humanity right now. Uh, um, yeah, uh, very, very sad. Yeah, also um, for us, also for us, also as an in intersos, we, we did some intervention in some area in the jungle, in the, so it's, it's the country for security and uh, yeah, the first, like let me say, the, foresee, the, the, the forecast for the next year, I think is worse than 
this year, also because the flood is growing, is a, it's more severe, severe than, than last year, and uh, the funds are less, uh, and uh, yeah, we need them more. So also me, I'm quite a pessimistic, uh, uh, like, uh, idea for the future of South Sudan, at least for next year, or after maybe improve, but I'm not actually. Uh, also because this year is very important to say that uh, the, dry, the, the rainy season in many parts of the country delay a couple of months, uh, so uh, sorghum uh, is not growing uh, and uh, the river was quite dry. And uh, so for sure, we are, we are foreseeing for next year this kind of problem. So actually climate change is very, it is very visible in South Sudan, so famine, carestry, uh, protection problem, wash, and also climate change is very, very like uh, uh, visible, also the big way. Yeah. Um, for me, I would say that uh, food distribution right now are absolutely necessary in uh, in South Sudan. I think it's sad that it's still necessary, but I think it's still not an option to to not distribute food. Once again, I I do believe that as you may say, it would be quite interesting to try to have a more sustainable approach to build resilience programs that may be a bit more expensive, takes more time, but at the end could be like a more interesting. So I'm actually looking forward to have a bit of a transformation of the humanitarian approach in South Sudan when it comes to, to food insecurity. But I, when we see the situation right now, I do believe that it's we couldn't consider to, to not have a food distribution. And WFP is already like uh, did some press release saying that the, their funds is going down as well. So they are not able to distribute as more as possible when the, actually the needs are, are, are growing. Um, I, I think it's very really worrying for, for the South Sudanese people. And also, uh, I agree with Marjolaine, and also I add uh, something regarding the security. Because for example, uh, uh, during the dry season, it's more dangerous than the, the, the rainy season, because uh, during the dry season, the army, the militia, they are moving to area to area, and so it becomes insecure. Sometimes we delay distribution because maybe the youth of this village attack and deny the other one. So we need to postpone one week and people have no food. During the rainy season, it's better because they are, the militia and the youth, they don't move, but because there is the water, you cannot reach the area. So actually, every season has no problem. And uh, the basis, until the government don't invest in infrastructure, there will be no future for this country, because the aid at a certain point is going to finish, unfortunately. But uh, sustainability, percent maybe, the percent. I, 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 we are, we are um, pessimists, I imagine it, but uh, yeah, maybe it's better. Wash situation, it's, it's the same. Um, I mean, in any country of the world, the access to clean water is actually something that is provided by the government. So right now, there is way too much responsibility on humanitarians when it comes to that. Um, because people don't have funds, don't have money, even if you provide access to water, at one point, you cannot sustain it. In some areas in South Sudan, you don't have access to underground water at all. There is no underground water. So you have to treat uh, surface water from the night. Meaning that you have to have like uh, people paid to like to treat this water. You need to provide chemicals that are not available on local markets. So as soon as humanitarian are withdrawing from an area, you know that the wash situation will go down completely. When we have access to underground water, which doesn't require any treatments, you still need to maintain it. You know, like uh, you have like a pump. If your pump breaks, you need to replace it. There is no access to to spare parts, so I, I think like the the interventions are good quality, but to link with what Stefano said, um, the sustainability of it for me is uh, really limited and will remain really limited until the government is able to provide like uh, these basic services. Um. Actually, uh, through 
like mostly in Tassos, like in the area where we are working, for sure we, we coordinate through the, we, there's a, for example, there's a working group, like in Acobo, there is a protection working group. We are the, the leader of the group. Uh, we participate to the cluster. For example, uh, we, were, we, were, we are quite strong in education. So we are co-leading the cluster of education in several states. And so through cluster, working group, and also we organize uh, between uh, NGO working in the field, there's a time a workshop or a meeting just to coordinate the action. Let me say that in South Sudan, compared to other countries where I worked before, NGO are not really like uh, willing to coordinate too much between them. Sometimes it's just is a, is a big competition. There's a big competition, and sometimes they keep secret uh, some data they don't share with you, and this one make uh, not really effective the intervention. Actually, uh, and because the, when the fund becomes less and less and less, uh, for sure, many NGO they try to be more competitive, make the project, to not share information. So this one is a, is a bad part of the humanitarian world. As in protection education, we coordinate uh, working group, uh, subcluster, and we, find, we, 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 we share information on a monthly basis during the meeting and in the field through the working group. And also, we tell the authorities support us some time to support, like to connect with other NGO. And uh, yeah, this mostly is the, how we work the cluster and the working group. to the field like the best way to learn the, the, the this job is coming to the field do a real experience on the field and i think you will learn a lot first of all how to deal with the people the different culture how to adapt yourself sometimes some people maybe study this uh, uh, they, are, they, are, they are very good in theory but later when they come to the field they are not able to manage or to adapt themselves to the situation and south sudan is a very Majorelle knows very well, she lived six months in a tent in the, in the forest. It's really, really an hard uh, station of Sudan, more than Yemen, more than Iraq, because the structure, they're not existing. Our compound in Akobo are just cool, are done by mud and grass. And now you must take one month. Marianna knows because she came a couple of times with me. The latrina are outside, there is the mud. And so South, South Sudan is a real uh, interesting field. On my side, I uh, would say, like, um, try to be open-minded. I mean, when you do humanitarian work, you're going to country, you think you know stuff about it, and actually you don't. I, I, I will be leaving my mission tomorrow, actually, after one and a half year in South Sudan. After six months, like, ah, I get it. After seven months, like, actually, not at all. You know, like, all these contexts are so difficult. It's another culture. It's years of history it's years of influence from other countries you really have to to be really aware that actually you have no idea about what is happening and to be very humble um, regarding that so to be open-minded to be humble for me it's really important if you want to be a good humanitarian because you need to work in a very multicultural environment and you you have to to adapt i agree and the second one is be curious uh i mean Read the news, learn what is happening in the in the world, it's what your master is doing, but go further than that, like really try to to talk with people, to, to try to understand. Um, I think for me a good humanitarian is someone who is able to sit with anyone in the community, saying like, so tell me your life, explain to me, like uh, um, to take information to to understand, because without this understanding, you cannot inform your action, and your action will will not be like uh, so relevant.